I got a comment on one of my videos recently asking me to talk about whether or not I would recommend specific boot camps. Uh, but instead of doing that, I thought it'd be useful to talk about how I would go about evaluating QA boot camps. To start off with, I'd like to talk a bit about my context. Um, I have never taken a QA boot camp. I actually did a graduate program. So the advice I would be giving would be based on how I make decisions in terms of uh, spending money, uh, but also in terms of what I know about the QA industry and about testing. Uh, so firstly, when this person shared the links with me and from other QA boot camps I know, uh, they often require you to spend quite a bit of money uh, and they often would be a shorter space of time. So a few thousand, say US dollars for a two or three month full-time boot camp. And then this also may come in the form of a percentage of your salary for the first year or two. And in that case, those are safer in a way because then those companies are aligned with you to help you succeed to get a job. Now, you may end up paying a lot more in the long run uh, because if you just did a one-off fee then and get a job straight away, you'd pay less compared to a, sal to a percentage. Uh, but the, the risk, um, I would say, is less in a way but definitely higher payment. Uh, one thing to also remember is that it's a business. Now, they are gonna sell you an idea that uh, do this course, uh, study this thing, and you're gonna make lots of money, or uh, in your first year, you, you can make uh, six figures. Um, but know that it is in their best interest to convince you to sign up and to part money, for you to part with your money. Now, when it comes to what to consider, um, I would try and see how, if you can have a look at their curriculum, um, and then run that curriculum past some testers that you respect, and see, okay, based on what you know of the industry, is this what um, would help me get a job? Is this what's in demand? Would these things be useful? Um, you could also then find out their job placement, um, not say policy, but their success rate. So I've seen that some um, institutions will share that information and they'll say 80% uh, of graduates got a job in the first year or 90% uh, of graduates uh, got a job within six months in testing. They may then even publicize um, like the average pay of graduates. Now, if they do end up sharing the statistics around the graduates and how successful the graduates are, then see if we can dig deeper into them. So there's a book that I read recently called How to Lie with Statistics. Actually, I read it a few years ago, but I do come back to it every now and then. And it's made me realize that you can have a statistic and not be lying, but then be misleading. Uh, so then try and dig deeper to see when you see these claims on the front page of these QA boot camps, figure out exactly uh, where these numbers are coming from and what the truth is, not just what they want to tell you. Um, <clears throat> another thing I would want to add is ask about what support they provide you when looking for a job. Um, is there like a module where they help you find a job? Uh, maybe they have some connections in the industry so they could help you uh, with finding a job, I would say for not just in testing and QA, uh, but for many people, that first step is the hardest. So if they are very supportive of you in finding that first job, then I think that's amazing. Um, do they have any information on writing a CV? Um, do they have some sort of um, ar um, arrangements or networks to help you get that f an internship, for example? Um, but these are things that I would be looking into with the QA bootcamp to see if it's uh, worth, worth spending your money on.